uh, you know what? December has been good to all of us. We are almost uh, celebrating Christmas, and then we are almost entering 2022. Uh, to me personally, I've encountered a lot of you know beautiful things in my way. Um, you know, traveling around Africa, seeing the beautiful people of Ethiopia, uh, Rwanda, and the others. Now, when it comes to the uh, brothers and sisters coming to Ghana, uh, there's this brother who deals with them a lot more than me. Yeah, so today I want us to, you know, have a discussion on whatever is going on with African brothers and sisters coming coming to Ghana. All right, so you've been watching some of my videos about um, visiting, having the spiritual visit or journey to the Cape Coast Castle. Yes, if you've seen one of these videos, kindly put it up as a comment and let me know. The same time you've seen others having naming ceremonies and all that. But since Gilbert is mostly into this, we would like to talk about, you know, the whole year um, review with his business. Yeah, which is the God Box Stores. All right, Gilbert, welcome to my YouTube yes, channel. Sir. Bless you. Yes, sir. So, how has it been so far, 2021, with God Box Stores? Uh, God Box Stores, 2021, I think, has been good for us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think other tour agencies can say the same <laughs> because, you know, because of this COVID situation, uh, you know, and it's it's kind of prevented a lot of people from, you know, traveling. They've been hesitant to travel in these times. Uh, but not only 2021, but even uh, at the end of 2020 yeah. as well, we had some people come in. Uh, so 2021 has been good because for us, as you said, God Box Tours, we deal with the spiritual and religious groups. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those spiritual and religious groups are actually traveling because of the COVID, because of the situation, because they are trying to get out of some of the, the places in the diaspora. Um, a lot of these spiritual and religious groups, um, you know, they have a, a notion that, you know, we are in the end times. Yeah. <laughs> You know, especially when it comes to these type of COVID, you know, mandates and, and vaccinations and all this. There's a lot of theories around that. So as far as God Box Tours is concerned, whilst other tour agencies may, may be struggling a bit around this time to get clients, you know, because we deal with the religious and spiritual groups, you know, actually, I, we probably have had the, one of the best years yeah. <laughs> we've ever had because of the situation that is going on in all these religious and spiritual groups coming in specifically um this year we had a lot of hebrews yeah um from from the african-american community so shout out to all the hebrews well. so the hebrews there. yes yes you know they they are really you know looking at prophecy they're looking mm -hmm. at certain biblical things uh that they believe is happening right now and that's what's leading a lot of them not only to africa but ghana specifically because Ghana, of course, in many of uh, uh, their eyes, you know, is the promised land. Mm -hmm. And so God Box Tours has almost become, we didn't create it in that sense, but it has become like, you know, yeah. a kind of uh, Ark of the Covenant, you know, leading the people yeah, the through the people. wilderness <laughs> <laughs> to Let's Ghana. Go. And uh, that's what we are doing now, yeah. Okay, good. So 2020, uh, 2021, um, can you mention some prominent people? I know everybody is prominent. Yes. Excuse me to say prominent people, but there's definitely people that are, you know, moving around that everybody is watching. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, we, you know, from you know, one of the one of the uh, leaders, mm -hmm. uh, the Hebrew leaders, um, Ronald Dalton. Yes. Uh, you know, he's he's a Hebrew leader from I think he um, his organization Hebrews to Negroes um, is a very big. Um, organization Hebrew um, production okay. uh, company you know he does film he, he does a lot of uh, social media work and um, you know he teaches a lot about the Hebrews and Africa in okay. general okay. which I think is a very important um, topic to discuss because you know for a lot of us here on this side you know we don't you know we are already living it we don't, we are not necessarily talking about whether we are Hebrews or we are oh, this not, or we are yeah. that. But when you look at the tradition, um, it's clear yeah. that, you know, a lot of our traditions are, are already within um, the Bible or the biblical traditions. And so there's definitely a connection there. And so, you know, Ronald Dalton, I would say, was probably uh, one of, you know, our biggest prominent figures that came. Uh, he brought a delegation of over 50 people. Wow. 
you know, 50 Hebrews with them. Most of them were also their own leaders in their communities as well. So that was, that was um, I think, probably the biggest name. Obviously, we brought, you know, Roland Martin. Um, and that, but that was at the end of 2019, just before um, uh, the lockdown. COVID, the lockdown mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we brought Sheena and Desmond Mead as well. Um, recently, uh, we just brought uh, a group that I think is very important. Yes, yeah. so that is yeah. the group I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, I mean, I followed up. One secret thing is that um, he called me late at night, <laughs> and then he was like, Echo, I've got this group coming in. Can you can you come, come, come and let's do something? Yeah. So I had to drive all the way to the castle. Yes. Now, tell us about this group, why they were here, yeah. and what actually did they do when they came here? Yeah, this group is, is, I think, was a very special group. Probably one of, the, for me personally, I think it was quite dear to my heart. Um, we wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, I got the call. I got the call from from an individual called Brandon and uh, Brandon Studevant. Uh, he he comes from an organization uh, called the Mass Liberation Project, mm -hmm. and you know he's he's heads the Mass Liberation Pro Project, mm -hmm. and he's uh, you know the Mass Liberation Project is sort of uh, it seems like a Obviously, from the name itself, you know, it's more from a democratic um, side in America, okay. um, similar to, you know, Black Lives Matter okay. and, and those type of organizations. And so this was a fairly young group of people, but um, some of the people that the organization consists of is um, formerly incarcerated people, people okay. that have gone to jail before. Okay. Um, you know, we have people that came that was part of the organization. They've been in jail. 29, 30 years, oh, you those, know, those, who came. those that came, you know, some of them, um, you know, they have some serious stories to tell. They've been, you know, victims of the system, you know, so oftentimes we don't ask, you might ask say 30 years, what did you do? But that's not questions that we ask. Uh, what we know is that either way, 30 years in, in, in chains is a Chain, long time yeah. regardless. And um, a lot of these people came out, they've done something better with their lives. Mm -hmm. They have rehabilitated themselves and they've joined this organization. And it's an NGO, Mass Liber uh, Liberation Project. It's an NGO, nonprofit organization in America. And they get funded. Okay. Um, so, you know, Brandon hit me up. One of the leaders hit me up and said, you know, I brought him on one of the Godbox tours a couple years ago. And he loved it. And he said he felt that uh, with what we do with the spiritual uh, aspect of the tours, that this is exactly what some of their people needed and so he brought a group of 15 people you know just a couple of weeks ago um, for a 10-day tour and um, you know so we customized the tour specifically towards yeah. that group yeah. um, knowing what they wanted they said they wanted healing and reclaiming that was their whole theme yeah and so we did a, a healing and reclaiming healing and reclaiming okay. which is you know exactly what we did for them so, and I think they were very happy. Okay, so then I will relate the healing to what happened at the castle. Yes. And then the reclaiming, definitely reclaiming the African ancestry. So I'm sure that is what happened with the naming ceremony. Absolutely. <clears throat> so normally what happens in the castle, we do it all the time with most of our folks, as you know. And so um, that was, you know, but again, even in those spaces, depending on the group that we have might be different. different the yeah. dynamics are a little different, but... Um, I'm glad that the God Box Source has that type of access at night um, with the Cape Coast people. And, and, you know, this place being yeah. a spiritual place, yeah. they understand the significance of what we do and they give us the privilege to be able to do those type of things at night in the castle and all yeah. of that. So, you know, we appreciate that. But the name, So that was the healing aspect mm -hmm. uh, of it, at least for the first day. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had the, the, you know, what they really wanted was a naming ceremony. Okay. That was the reclaiming aspect, like you're saying. Um, the naming ceremony. I think a lot of them thought that it was going to be quite simple. Yeah. You know, they would come in, get their names, and then leave. But, you know, shout outs to, you know, Obekesi. Yeah. Um, you know, he, and, 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 you know, some of the chiefs 
and the queen mothers that attended yeah. the ceremony because you know we really wanted to make sure that we for this particular group that we, we did it right mm -hmm. and so you know they went through the real naming yeah, real ceremony yeah. you know traditionally with the libations mm -hmm. um with you know the you know what we do even with our with with our babies in terms of yeah. knowing the difference between water, water and, and, and gin mm -hmm. um even though it looks the same yeah. it's not the same yeah. it doesn't taste the same and teaching them the difference um it was almost like a covenant that was being made it wasn't just a naming ceremony mm -hmm. but a covenant that was being made where one you were being adopted into the family yeah a royal family um and so it, you know when, as you're being named you're being named you're given your day name but you're also given a family name yeah you know we call it the soul name and so you know they, they were given certificates you know a lot of yeah. um, dancing and rituals and i mean something that i thought would take about maybe 45 minutes ended up taking about two hours <laughs> but it was two hours yeah. of just non-stop um you know, reclaiming mm -hmm. non-stop taking back and you can see that everybody was happy a lot of tears was being yeah. shed a lot of joy a lot of laughter and i think um those are probably that was probably one of the main highlights of, of, of our tour okay okay so i wanted to ask you've already mentioned some way in tears and all that did you speak to some of them and what did they say after the naming ceremony yeah. i mean how was the feedback like yeah no they again like they said they didn't expect some like all of, something like this um, again they didn't know the procedure mm -hmm. so as it was happening it became very fun to them yeah and they started to get more involved um, just to sit down um, not only just bringing your offering mm -hmm. to the chiefs um, but also seeing that you know certificates were made even in the naming ceremony there were a lot of spiritual things that were happening yeah. because you know it's a spiritual yes. ceremony and so you know somebody can be called and then you know the chief you know is watching this person and can see a certain spirit um and then you know a certain prophecy can come so actually you know unexpectedly someone was you know um crowned the chief oh wow in in the middle Within, uh, yeah. of the ceremony and it, that person just so happened to be the man that has spent yeah. 30 years in, oh. you know in prison and so you know him himself was prophesied that he had he had come from a lineage mm -hmm. of, of royalty and so he's just reclaiming you know he's gone through it you know and he's brought back his ancestors and now he's reclaiming his royalty again right. that was a very emotional uh time for everybody there because everybody in the, in the group and organization understood the struggles that this yeah, particular person had gone through and for him to come back and reclaim his royal status um, that was i think the highlights of the of the naming ceremony wow yeah. then that has been good for god box because healing reclaiming like that's a big thing for me i mean yes. listening to you unfortunately i wasn't there but we had to capture this and let you know yes. so hearing this i would like to ask you if you're watching this video right now would you like to go through the same process i know most of you are skeptic as to should i make this journey or not even with the this new coronavirus thing now let me even ask you this yeah. as somebody who deals with foreigners i wouldn't say african americans or i mean foreigners yeah. bringing foreigners to ghana to the motherland yeah. what is your take on the government decision to jab everybody before they enter or leave the country with with the, with the corona uh, vaccine yeah no it's a uh it's a difficult situation for tourism obviously it affects tourism um, because we have a lot of our people that are a bit skeptical yeah. about the the vaccinations mm -hmm. they didn't mind taking the tests yeah um, but a lot of people especially the groups that we deal with mm -hmm. in terms of the religious and spiritual groups who are always skeptical yeah of anything that the world is doing um you know they they're a bit discouraged um, with this vaccination yeah um, but then you have a, a, a group of people that don't care that don't care about this it won't affect them either way some of them actually um, you know appreciate the mandate mm -hmm. um, and you know for safety we know the government is doing what the government needs to do yeah. um, in order to protect the land I mean uh, over 
since the COVID situation has happened, we brought over, a, a, you know, over a hundred people to Ghana. Um, I think we've had about two COVID tests, yeah. two or three COVID tests. Um, and, you know, that was when they got to Ghana mm -hmm. uh, at the airport. They had to quarantine for three days. Yeah. Uh, they weren't happy about it. Mm -hmm. But this is the risks that we're taking when you're traveling in these times. And so, I mean, the fact, we're, we're yet to see how this is really going to affect yeah. us. But I can tell you already, uh, we've had some cancellations. Yes. You know, we've had some cancellations because um, people are still hesitant and want to know more about the man you know this this covid vaccination I'm not too sure why it's been mandated in ghana um you know but <laughs> you know <laughs> that's that's another yeah that's another topic <laughs> yeah, for another discussion about. yeah right. in terms of tourism um even already it's it's going to affect tourism in a lot of ways um but then there's going to be a huge population of people that are going to be coming in no matter what yeah, no, because yeah. You know, I, I liken it to the yellow fever vaccination mm -hmm. that was mandated. Uh, people don't know this was a mandate that really prevented a lot of African Americans, especially, from coming into Africa because, again, African Americans have a history with vaccinations, yeah, okay. you know, being uh, tested upon and experimented upon in their history in America. So they already are, are uh, you know, skeptical about these type of yeah. things. But white people are it. Um, other certain class of people, people yeah. are not, you know, <laughs> hesitant about that. And so, you know, just the social dynamics of it, I'm sure, will be affected. Um, and um, and these are things that we have to keep an eye on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So these are some of the things we have to keep our eyes on. If you're still coming, uh, like you said, it depends on you. Some people don't care. Some people don't care. Uh, I've, I've also had a lot of messages on my YouTube channel. Echo, why is the government doing that? Yeah. Has he taken some money? Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yo. Uh, I had a call today, and then he was like, Echo, I know you are not a political kind of person, but what is happening? Yeah. And I had to give in my submission as non-political person, yes, right? So, yes, yes, hey, thank yes. you very much for checking us. So, your last message to anybody coming or planning to come in 20. 22. Yeah, I would say, you know, let's not, um, let's not be affected or be discouraged by, you know, some of the mandates. This is just the time that we're in. We likened it to the yellow fever vaccination. Um, you know, somehow we got over that. Um, and and we'll, we'll, this too will pass at some point, you know, and, and you know, so people should should not be discouraged uh people should should still come um god box especially um you know if you believe that some of these things that are being done is to actually prevent you from coming i think that should give you um even more encouragement to try i don't think um certain things should stop you from coming um you know because the, there, there's always going to be a reason not to come mm -hmm. there's always going to be a reason to be discouraged um, that's why it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of faith to make these type of, um, to buy a $2,000 ticket, to come to Ghana um, to, for healing and reclaiming, which is something that we all need right now um, in these times. So I think actually this should be a time where it really, if anything, encourages you to, to make this type of trip. Um, and um, with God Box Tours, again, um, we, we do it a little differently and we take pride in it. Um, and so if you're interested, um, you know, you can shoot us an email at info at godboxtours.com. Um, you can check out our website, www.godboxtours.com. Um, you know, my man, you know, Echo, you know, he, he stays on this, you know, he's, he's the leading, he's the leading dude when it comes to anything Pan-Africanism and diaspora from the social media aspect. And this is what we do, you know, um, and so... You know, let's not be discouraged. Let's continue to encourage each other to make these type of moves because there's going to be healing on both sides. And both, and, and it's not just people coming from the diaspora that need healing. We need healing as well. But, you know, in order to get that healing, we need to come together, um, understand each other, enter into each other's experiences um, for a better understanding, uh, better reconciliation.